I want to wish you all a very happy birthday for those who are celebrating this week. Um, first of all, um, I feel like if you're in a relationship, um, it's a very, very stable type of relationship. You know, there's, um, there, there are ups and downs regarding communication, regarding, you know, being too critical, be careful about being too critical of the other person and, um, learn to, you know, um, I, I just feel like your partner might be going through some things and they want to vent and, you know, you're the fixer. You're the person that wants to help people with their problems. And you also give very, very good advice. But if your partner wants to just vent when people want to vent, and I can't stress this enough, when people want to vent, they just want to vent. They don't really want to um, hear, you know, how they can fix things or how they can, um, wh what they need to do. They don't really want to sidetrack away from their emotions, their need to, you know, like um, lay on the table everything that's pent up that's going on in their life. But your energy is that of, you know, the king of pentacles here where, okay, tell me your problem and I'll give you a solution. And this is great. This is really, really magnanimous. And this is just, you know, the, the, the energy that you embody. But they don't really want a solution. They just want to talk. They just want to get it off their chest. And a lot of the times, um, sitting back and listening to what they have to say, I feel like that's all that they need from you. They don't need the solutions. They don't need um, to talk a little bit further. They just want to vent, okay? Um, so that's the only thing that I'm feeling it, it could be problematic in the relationship aside from, you know, your need to always want to um, offer advice. I feel like it's it's wise to hold back a little bit. The partner that you're dealing with here shows up as the nine of wands and the nine of wands in this deck, the way that I see it is it's somebody that knows how to work their magic. Okay, it's like um, somebody who's learning, somebody who's going through a lot in their, who has gone through a lot in their own lives, and they're trying to juggle multiple things, multiple projects. Um, it's somebody that has been hurt, they're, they're battered, they're bruised, and I also feel like there's an element of they feel, they, they know that you offer really good advice, but they're trying to juggle everything on their own. They're trying to make things, they're, they're trying to test themselves, their skills and their capabilities so that they know their limitations. So it, it's, it's almost like they want to be left alone to their own devices. They don't need assistance. They don't need help. They want to do it on their own just to prove to themselves that they can do it, that they can juggle the responsibilities without dropping the ball. OK, so if this is somebody that you're dealing with, you want to be careful with this energy and you want to just let it be, even though you're, I feel, on the sidelines looking in and you're just like, I can help you with that or I know a better way to do it. And you sure you could very well know a better way to do it, but just let them, you know, deal with their own things and let them kind of handle it themselves because they want to test their capabilities. Um, you could be dealing with another earth sign, a, a Taurus, a Virgo, or a Capricorn. And if that is the relationship that you're in, I have here the Hierophant, where things are really, really stable, things are very solid. However, with the Hierophant, this is sort of like family members interfering in the relationship. OK, so it's like, you know, mom, dad, their expectations of who you should date, their expectations of who the other person should date. And I'm, I'm getting the message of like um, same sex relationship or non-traditional relationships that might not um, have the approval of the people in your family unit. But nonetheless, I feel like you're going to go ahead with it. I mean, you're the one in the relationship, not them. Right. So it, it shouldn't really matter. And then I also have as well. The idea of family planning, um, you know, taking the relationship to the next level, um, bringing a child into the world. This is like a traditional relationship, child rearing, uh, getting married, um, 
taking each other's last names and, and you know, things like that, the, the, the escalation of a relationship. And I feel like you or your partner might not be in a, it might be your partner might not be in that, that space where they are financially, um, stable enough. So this is like juggling two jobs, working in a, on a contract basis and, um, not feeling like, you know, you're locked into a stable enough of a job, possibly juggling work with school, work with, um, you know, like a side job and a main job, or even making ends meet with two small projects that you're working on where there is a definitive, um, you know, time limit. So somebody wants, you know, the, the whole nine yards, the kids, the house, the, the white picket fence, the family, and then the other person is financially not where they need to be to juggle these responsibilities and be okay, or financially they're not where they need to be to be able to offer you the dream or, or, you know, you're not at a point where you feel like your partner might be a little bit frivolous. So you're not yet ready or sure about taking that leap of faith and getting into a relationship. For those of you who are dating, you're in a really, really good space, okay? As the king of pentacles, this is someone who's very secure, who's very financially savvy. So for singles and people who are newly dating, you have somebody that you're definitely, you know, they, they've got, they're carrying the torch for you. They really do like you because, you know, who wouldn't like this type of a character, he or she is stable, solid, financially very wise, has a lot of resources, has a lot of assets. You could own property. You could have a lot of money in your bank account. And I feel like, you know, you're you're not flashy about it. You're just like, I'm just, you know, uh, an average Joe. But I feel like you have a lot of resources at your disposal. You're out looking for love because I feel for some of you, you're newly single or you have been single for quite some time. And now you're like, okay. I'm putting myself out on the dating scene. So I see like dating apps and you're looking for a long-term commitment with the Hierophant. You're also looking for somebody who is on your level so that you can share resources with them without feeling like you're shouldering the responsibilities. And um, you're, you're kind of like, you, you have somebody in mind though. I am looking, I'm drawn to the star. So it's like you're at a point where you have somebody that you're either crushing on or you really, really like and you want to make the, the relationship, you know, um, blossom. But you also need the other person to also be on board with you. And you might have somebody now that you feel they're great and I really like them. But I'm not really sure if they're able to, you know, be... I'm not sure if they're, they're like marriage material. And a lot of it has to do with the fact that there is some communication issues between the two of you. Okay. We have here the five of swords, and this is usually ideological differences, fighting over technicalities, fighting over methodologies, fighting over, let's do it this way or that way, but not really fighting over anything meaningful. So you might have someone who wants the same things out of life. Your values align, but the way you do things is just very, very different from one another. And that as a result of that, it just feels like I'm not really sure. And, you know, you, you guys can always uh, take your time because I don't feel that they're going anywhere. And they're a little bit too topsy-turvy for my liking. And I feel like as a result of that, you're, you could be, you know, very much in love with them. But... There are things that they need to sort out in their own lives. Some of them, uh, the people that you're dating, they might recently have been separated and they're not, you know, the, the, the divorce situation is not finalized yet. And you're waiting on them to finalize that before you can consider them a serious contender. And then for others, I feel like there's still squabbles and, and entanglements with their ex and you're waiting for that to kind of um, resolve itself before they can really start dating and before you can give them anything solid or stable. So you're kind of looking at a person and trying to see if what they promise you match up with their actions, if their words match up with their actions before you can decide on the next step with them. But I feel like you know 
you have strong feelings like the the feelings are definitely there it's just a little bit more muted you know it's not like the the letting your passion run wild and just um dating whoever you know that that stirs your passion i feel like you're being very methodical about your approach and you know more importantly you know that you have a lot to offer and so you're not going to be settling for anything less okay um, for those who are newly single and dating, I definitely see um, another earth sign, a Taurus, another Virgo, or a Capricorn that is very, um, it, it's like somebody that is the opposite of you, though, because I feel like, you know, even though they're an earth sign, they might have a lot of uh, fire in their chart where they are spontaneous, they're a little bit unpredictable. Um, they could be a little bit more like emotionally blocked. So they might have um, air in their chart. So like Aquarius, Gemini, and Libra, where their energy is just like very cerebral, very logical, wants to do things on their own. And they, they really value their opinions. So, and so as a result of it, there might be a lot of ideological clashes between the two of you as to what you believe and what um, it's like being stubborn too. So I, I see like, you know, they could be very, very stubborn. And not and they 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 want to kind of like get to the bottom of things rather than saying let's agree to disagree. They're like no, let's just argue about this or let's just um, you have to come around to my way of thinking. So I see a little bit of um, ideological differences between the two of you. Okay, but nevertheless, I feel like you know you you have somebody that's um, quite good in the picture, but you're just not sure of the long term. Um, the long-term commitment level, whether or not they're on the same page as you or whether or not they're marriage material or even dating material. Other areas of your life, I have a lot of drive and a lot of ambition. That's um, it, It's like you're oozing it. It's coming out of your pores. And I feel like this is your energy. We have here the strength card. And the strength card is basically, you know, knowing when to do things in moderation, knowing when to stop, knowing when to proceed ahead. This is like having divine protection as well as divine guidance to gear you on the right path and to tell you, you know, it's like listening to your spirit guide so that they can tell you, okay, now's the time to do it. Or, okay, this is the number that you want. So like you're being fed a lot of spiritual messages. And I feel like in order for us to get to that state where we are connecting really well with our spirit guides, we have to heal issues from our past, okay? So many of you have undergone a lot of spiritual healing. You might have issues with family members not accepting the person that you are. And I feel like, you know, as a Virgo in person, you're so considerate that a lot of the times you have to curb your... Um, you have to curb your appetite. You have to curb your um, your individuality in order to appease the people that you love. And especially if you come from a very strict family background and you're, you know, you, you're a little bit more eccentric or you have like certain things that you do that you know they don't, family members or the, the, the social group that you belong to might not approve of. I feel like many of you have to curb that side of you or have to downplay or have to hide that side of you so that you can be, so that you not so much fit in, but so that you, as a courtesy for other people. And this is what most people don't get. It's not that you're trying to fit in. It's that you don't want to make the other person uncomfortable with your eccentricities, right? And I feel like, you know, the Aquarius people could really, really learn a lot from your playbook because they try to shock people. They try to be, they want to stand out. They want that attention, you know? Whereas for you guys, it's it's more like, okay, so let, let's just say, for example, um, you don't believe in um, in in marriage, and you're around a bunch of people that do believe in marriage and they, they preach, you know, so you're going to keep your opinions to yourself, not because you don't want the confrontation, not because you don't want um, to them, not, not because, you know, you, you, you don't believe enough or you can't defend your values. Whenever you have specific things that you really believe in, 
I feel that, you know, you will stick to your guns and you will defend it and, and, and fight for it. However, you don't want to cause conflict because if you were to argue your point, you would always win Virgos because you believe in the strength of your conviction. And so this is a, a week where I feel like, you know, you're erring on the side of enlightenment. There will be people coming in wanting to battle, wanting to, you know, give you a piece of their mind. You know, this is what I think and I think I'm right. Or other people that, that are just like, I want things to be done a specific way. And I feel like you don't want that conflict with them, mainly because you understand there's no point to it. And so you are going to do what you're going to do, regardless of whether or not other people agree. And I feel like there's this energy here about, you know, um, keeping your head down, keeping your head down and going about things your way, because you ultimately know that it's the best way. Um, I feel like with the, the two kings, the king of wands and the king of swords, this is dealing with really, really strong persons and personalities in your work environment where they're a little bit like um they're a little bit like I want to say stubborn but the word is not really stubborn um dealing with personalities that are just really really strong like very alpha types of personality my way or the highway okay and um they, you have this quiet strength about you that's going to allow you to win them over. And you also have this sense about you. I, I love this star card where it's almost like we don't need to fight over this. We just need to get things done and we need to kind of uh, heed the higher good. So it's like, let's do the, the one thing that is best for everybody. I don't see you playing mediator but I feel like you're dealing with really strong personalities who wants their way because of ego issues. Whereas you're trying to just do your work and you're just like, I, I do it because it's the right thing. Or I do it because I believe that it's the, the, it's going to serve the best optimal outcome for everybody involved. And the two people might not see eye to eye. And so you're not playing mediator. You're just going to do what you need to do in order to get your part of the responsibilities done. So the energy for this week, there's definitely a lot of work in the picture. Uh, there are some issues here as well. Father figure, health issues. Okay, for those of you dealing with that, I feel like if it's a father or like a male figure in your life who's dealing with some health issues, he's a little bit grouchy, mainly because his freedom of movement is restricted. Okay. The star in the strength card deals greatly with uh, health, rejuvenation, healing, and things like that. So if it's somebody that's hurt their back, they're going to be incapacitated. Um, and their, their freedom of movement is restricted. And so they're, they're going to be grouchy. They're going to say things they don't mean. And they're going to be like, you know, I expect this to be brought to me. So it's like, they're, they're not mobile. So you're going to have to, you know, wait on them like hand and foot, or you're going to have to do a lot of things for them. So just be patient about that. Okay, Virgos. I hope the reading is helpful for you guys. Um, either way, there's a lot of love and, and strength and just uh, inner wisdom coming in from this, uh, both of these spreads. So I feel like you're going to be okay. Um, you're going to be divinely guided as to what you need to do. So, you know, take it easy. Okay. And, um, let people just do what they need to do and you focus on your responsibilities. All right.